1921, my great granddad William was put on trial and sentenced to death in Mountjoy for the murder of an English officer, Lieutenant Henry Anglis, which he didn't commit. I'm innocent of the charge brought against me. I know nothing of the transaction whatever and I've never been to 22 Main Street in my life. I, fought, I fired no shot and I've never used a revolver. In 1921, he went to trial in Dublin for the murder of a, a British um, officer. Um, he was sentenced to death because of that. Um, um, but he proclaimed his innocence, as uh, was um, um, found out in the end anyway. He was, uh, he, he was given a pardon, but um, yeah, he was sentenced to death in 1921 for, for, the, for the murder of a British officer. So in school we were doing a lot about the struggle for independence in the 20s and the fact that this happened in 1921 it was you know it was quite relevant and that this happened something that was in my family happened in such a historic time for Ireland was you know really interesting. Yeah I'd say I, I don't know if there was any particular time that we were told because we would have all known it we maybe just have been aware of it and maybe heard it through from family members etc but I don't recall a specific time when you know, we were told or when, when we became aware of it. I think it was something that just over time we just came to, know, came to know. So the actual crime um, that was committed was by four IRA soldiers who um, shot Lieutenant Anglis in a room in 22 Main Street and then the evidence was planted against William for committing this crime when he didn't. On the morning of the 21st November, uh, a large group of men from the Dublin Brigade of the IRA, which would include members of Michael Collins' uh, famous or infamous squad, uh, who were the sort of full-time gunmen in the Dublin IRA, uh, they visit eight addresses in the city, uh, the Gresham Hotel on the north side, and then seven addresses, uh, houses on the south, in the south of the city. Um, and they essentially shoot uh, a number of men. There are 12 uh, men killed, 12 who are supposed to be British intelligence officers are killed, nine of them are actually killed in their pyjamas so the idea is that they go in on a Sunday morning when the men are still in bed which reduces the risk of any sort of gunfight so you get them when they're, when they're still asleep. Uh, two more auxiliaries are killed then out on the street, they come across some of the IRA men escaping um, and they're also shot so there are 14 casualties uh, in the morning. Um, the the people who were killed, it's questionable how many of them were intelligence officers and there's still some debate about who exactly they were. Uh, the, the traditional story is that they're members of, of this Cairo gang who were a group of intelligence agents working in the city. Um, it's not entirely certain if there ever was a Cairo gang and if there was a Cairo gang whether or not some or all of these men were actually members of it. It's probable that they got a couple of uh, men killed in the wrong, so there are a couple of you know, I might say innocent, but, but certainly they aren't the, the intelligence officers they're claimed to be. So this is at the same time um, that Michael Collins was ordering um, national, Irish nationalists and Republicans to go and basically take out the, the British intelligence officers in Dublin at the time who were sent to infiltrate Irish nationalist organisations. So as this was at the height of the was the clash between those who wanted an Irish Republic and the British trying to keep keep those people at bay. Um, this was like you know this was a big deal, and um, the British retaliated to the murder of these intelligence officers by going into Croke Park with their black and tan officers, who they brought into Ireland, and shooting people, which we all know is Bloody Sunday. The events that take place in Croke Park on the afternoon of the 21st November uh, were viewed certainly at the time by a lot of people as a, as a reprisal for what had happened on the morning. Um, essentially a, a Gaelic football match takes place in Croke Park between Dublin and Tipperary uh, and that match is raided by Crown forces who presumably assume that a number of the men who taken part in the shootings in the morning would actually be in the crowd or at least that there would be members of the IRA in the crowd at the game. Um, and they. They go in in the middle of the game and they open fire on the crowd. So they fire for about three minutes. Now the official line is that there is 
the fighting, the shooting starts from the crowd. So they say members of the crowd fire on them and they fire back. Again, that, that's, that's fairly debatable. Um, at the end, so whether whoever started the shooting, uh, by the end there are 14 civilians are killed, including one player, uh, Michael Hogan. Um, 10 of them actually die on, on the day at the scene and then another four die uh, later on. So it's, it's a, a big number of civilian casualties for, for one, one incident. Frank Teeling, the main suspect in the case, he, when he was on trial, he protested on behalf of William Conway and Edward Potter being um, indicted for, the, for something that they didn't do and that he said that he didn't want to see people who were innocent suffering because of what, something that they didn't do or because false evidence was planted against them um, and that he swore that they weren't there on the night that this happened in 22 Mount Street just you know which um, supported the other men's arguments that they weren't there. So the, when the trial concluded um, William was meant to be hung in Mountjoy but he was then pardoned and sent to Kilmainham Jail where he was to spend um, life, he was going to serve life um, in prison. And then after that he was um, released and sent over to Wormwood Scrubs in London where he was to serve, to, where he served two years. Um, but then he came back to Ireland. I really don't know how he, how he would have coped with it. He was fairly young at the time. I'd say he was only about 18 or 19, maybe 18, when, when he was arrested. So it's very difficult for, for me to say. I, I, I really don't know how he would have coped. I think one of his brothers was also in prison at the same time. So um, I think once the, the sentence had been commuted to life imprisonment as opposed to uh, being a death sentence, he may have coped a bit better. He was transferred to the UK. He was in prison, uh, a number of prisons over there before he was transferred back to Dublin. So I I'd say he, he coped with it, but I, 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 I don't know how, I don't know he, he, maybe his, his young age may have, may, have, may have helped. He lived in Tipperary and he went back to, he went back to Tipperary after all this and that was where his family grew up and his own family grew up um, and so he laid to rest there. Despite all that had happened, you know, with, during the 20s, he still managed to get away from all of that and just live his life. 